Welcome to the announcement of the Stockholm Water Prize Laureate 2023. My name is Pekka Heino and I have with me uh, Torgny Holmgren, the Executive Director of the Stockholm International Water Institute, CIWI, and Cecilia Brink, Vice Chair of CIWI. Torgny, tell us about this institute. Uh, thank you, Pekka. It's a privilege to be here today. CIWI, the Stockholm International Water Institute, was first founded to award the Stockholm Water Prize back in 1991 and to organize a scientific seminar for the most prominent scientists in the world on water. That has later turned into the World Water Week, which nowadays is the annual leading global conference on water. And later on, five years later, we also started and established the Stockholm Junior Water Prize, which also awarded by our organization. And uh, nowadays, and that is only a small part of what we are doing, uh, as a leading expert on water governance, we have programs and projects all over the world nowadays. And in our offices in Stockholm, in Pretoria, Bogota, in a short while, Amman, our 100 plus staff members are experts on water governance in the fields of water sanitation, water climate to water diplomacy. So that is what we're doing right now all over the world. Mm. And Cecilia, what can be said about the prize? The Stockholm Water Prize has been awarded since 1991 and it is the most prestigious water award in the world. There is a selection process which is modelled on that of the Nobel Prizes with a nomination committee of some of the greatest water experts in the world, chaired by Professor Deliang Chen of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. This cooperation is a guarantee for the high quality of the prize. And I would like to take the opportunity to thank the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, the Stockholm Water Prize Nominating Committee, for the rigorous review of the great number of nominations during the selection of these distinguished laureates. And I would also like to thank the City of Stockholm and the Stockholm Water Prize founders, Ålands Banken, Bacardi, Ground Force Foundation, the Water Environment Federation and Xylem. Mm. And now 30 plus laureates and counting, uh, who can receive the prize? Well, anybody can nominate. Uh, over the years, the prize has been awarded to individuals, to organizations, covering a very broad range of fields within science and policy and practice. And this is one of the features that makes the Stockholm Water Prize unique. It can be awarded to theory and to practice. Mm -hmm. uh, the prize is a recognition of outstanding achievement in the field of sustainable use and protection of the world's water resources. Mm. Let me take this opportunity also to uh, express my sincere thanks to His Majesty the King of Sweden. It's usually His Majesty who presents the prize at this time of the World Water Week in Stockholm held end of August every year. And also big thanks to the city of Stockholm and the founders of the Stockholm Water Prize, having made it possible for us to award the Stockholm Water Prize for 33 years since it was created in 1991. Mm. Thank you uh, both. We are getting closer. Now we are about to call Gothenburg, Sweden and uh, the aforementioned chair of the nominating committee for the Stockholm Water Prize, Professor Deliang Chen. Over the years, the Stockholm Water Prize laureates have represented a broad range of water related to the activities, professions and its scientific disciplines from around the world. Their groundbreaking scientific discoveries and innovative solutions have changed how we understand and use water. In the past years, I have been honored to chair the nomination committee to select the best candidates for the prize. Like previous years, we were impressed by the many high quality nominations this time. Based on the deliberations of the committee, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences decided on this year's laureate, which was then confirmed by the Stockholm International Water Institute. I'm now ready and glad to announce the laureate of the Stockholm Water Prize 2023 is Dr. Andrea Rilado. Dr. Andrea Rilardo is a thought leader in hydrological science whose conceptual and 
quantitative models have provided in-depth understanding to the field of high ge geomorphology and eco-hydrology. In his research, he has uncovered key connections between river networks and the spread of salutes, aquatic species, and diseases. Congratulations, Professor Andrea Yunado. Thank you, Professor Deliang Chen. And now it is time, finally, to meet the laureate. We are calling Venice, Italy. Buongiorno, Professor Andrea Rinaldo of the École Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne in Switzerland and also the Università di Padova. Uh, congratulations and tell us, what, was, what were the first thoughts that went through your mind when you received the news that you are the Stockholm Water Prize Laureate of 2023? It was a big emotion, of course. Uh, the very first thing that came to mind um, uh, was Ignacio Rodriguez II, the Stockholm Water Prize of 2002, who, a dearest friend and colleague, who passed away last, uh, uh, last October, in fact. And there was a deep emotion for my brain retrieved immediately by in the, in the, in the, in the emotion of the moment, both the fond memories of a, a ceremony which I attended and the sour regret for his loss. But other, other role models also uh, uh, appear. One is, uh, 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 you know, I thought of uh, Gideon Dagan, the Stockholm Water Prize of 1998, who just turned 90. It was a wonderful event uh, celebrating this uh, in Tel Aviv in Jerusalem lately, which I attended. And also, the role models for me have been also Pete Eagleson, 1997, and Wilfried Brutzert, uh, 2002. And... Um, I am humbled by and uh, proud of uh, following their footsteps, if you allow me, or Robert Frost-like. And I am very, very grateful to the, uh, to the Stockholm International Water Institute and the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. Thank you. Now, the image that we see behind you is of Venice, the city where you were born. And something happened right there in 1966 when you were 12 years old, which led you onto the path that took you to the point where you are today. Uh, tell us about that. It's, uh, yes, Venice is always in my mind, as you easily gather from the background and from whatever I do. And when uh, the waters receded, and uh, I, after the great uh, flood of 1966, as you said, I was 12 years old, leaving misery and uh, and doubts behind, what um, a 12-year-old uh, would uh, wonder, uh, like everybody I knew, was, will Venice survive? Because the fragility of a place, its vulnerability, in fact, uh, in the, its relationship to the water was obvious. And it was very clear then that uh, the entire uh, relation between uh, the city, the built and the natural environment, and the waters that were foundational to, to my hometown would have to be rethought completely. Mind you, it was cycling in the thousand plus years of a of a life of a Venetian Republic, in fact. But it's certainly the moment was uh, asking for it. But certainly my issues in, in water uh, and water issues originated then. Uh, also building on a, a family legacy of hydraulic engineering. And uh, I guess you can say that it led to a mission in life, perhaps. Now, the Stockholm Water Prize uh, provides you with a megaphone of sorts and hopefully the ears of uh, decision makers. What is the one important thing that you would like to communicate and really make the world understand? Yes, Becca, my punchline is this. Time is ripe to rethink distributive justice of water resources management and to reduce inequalities in the global scale. When I, when I traveled to the south of the world to study the spreading of waterborne disease, uh, which I did for many years, in fact, I see that access to safe water distribution networks is socially biased, but the ownership of a cell phone is not. When we acknowledge that large-scale water management plants may cause loss of biodiversity or, say, foster the spread of poverty, reinforcing disease, we easily account for the economic impact of improved agriculture on the local economy. But we do not yet put a price tag on the ecosystem services that we lose for good, nor to the true cost of disease. 
This has to change. We now have the tools. Congratulations, Professor Rinaldo. See you in Stockholm. And there are more greetings to come. Hello, Director of the Stockholm Resilience uh, Center at Stockholm University and also member of the nominating committee for the Stockholm Water Prize, Professor Lina Gordon. Congratulations, Professor Andrea Rinaldo, on winning the Stockholm Water Prize. Your groundbreaking research in hydrogeomorphology, ecohydrology and river networks has been a great source of inspiration to water scientists around the world. Thank you for your outstanding efforts and congratulations once again. Thank you, Professor Lina Gordon, and thank you and congratulations again, Professor Rinaldo, this year's Water Prize Laureate. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in uh, Stockholm in August. Bye bye. Looking forward. And for those of you watching, please check out the homepage of Siwi and the Stockholm World Water Week, siwi.org, uh, and look for the nominating process of the 2024 Stockholm Water Prize Laureate. You can nominate your water hero and you can do so from end of March till end of September this year. And the theme for this year's World Water Week, by the way, is Seeds of Change. Innovative solutions for a water wise world. It invites us to rethink how we manage water, which ideas, innovations, and governance systems will we need in a more unstable and water scarce world. So, Please be with us again in August for the World Water Week with its sessions, discussions, prize ceremonies, and water dialogues. Thank you so much for joining us now. Bye bye. <laughs>